unto Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Almighty and undisputed voice of all understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, with his compassion on us and his holy church, O Master, and show us and those who pray with us the riches of your tender mercy. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with all glory and honor and worship, now and ever and Forever. Amen. Shout out joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praise to His name, give to Him glorious praise. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever, Amen. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Be gracious to us, O God, and bless us. Let your face shine upon us and have mercy on us. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing.
Withstanding the flames, you stood and called out. Hasten, O compassionate God, hurry help us in your mercy. For you can do whatever you will. Glory to our Holy Lord God, we render glory to you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you once walked, which you lived in them. But now put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and foul talk with your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new man, who is being renewed in knowledge after the image of his creator. Here, there cannot be Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free man, but Christ is all and in all. He is to reader. Wisdom be Alleluia.
and still the fear of your blessed commandments that us that have trampled all carnal desires, we will be the spiritual life of thinking and doing everything to please you. We go cry to God, our delight and our soul, the soul of the bodies, we give glory to you, the eternal to our Father, and all holy good life and spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the reading of the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. At that time, Jesus told this parable. A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time, and as the time of the banquet, at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for all is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. I pray you, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine, and I go to examine them. I pray you, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported this to his master. Then the householder in anger said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the maimed and blind and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you have commanded has been done and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste of my banquet. Glory to you, O Lord. Sunday before the Nativity, before Christmas. And a lot of times there's like a whole week of the forefathers. This is the week of the forefathers. And then next week, the week of the fathers. But really, there's only one day <laughs> next week. The next Sunday is actually the day before Christmas. So, so we have um, the Sunday, the second Sunday of the father, forefathers, and the Sunday of the Nativity, our pre, pre, uh, in, in preparation for the Nativity. Um, each day does have each day, unless it's just like it was just a tone one or tone two. Uh, during the seasons, there are certain there's special titles for these Sundays because we're, we're focusing on something. And right now, finally on the Sundays, we, in our liturgical calendar, it's Byzantine. Uh, finally, has like Advent themes. It's all the past Sundays had no reference to the coming of Christ. Okay. We just have a fasting period, but now we get more liturgically focused uh, as of this this Sunday. And uh, so for these this Sunday and next Sunday, uh, the accent is on uh, the background of Christ coming into the world, and that is the lineage of the families. 
okay. Uh, um, so the genealogy of the Lord. So I had this icon of, of the, uh, the root of Jesse, this tree of Jesse, where you have uh, Jesse is laying down on the bottom. Jesse is the father of who? David. Yeah, King David. Okay. What town were they from? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Yeah. yeah. So when it came uh, a thousand years later, when, uh, when the census was being taken, everyone had to go to their hometown. So St. Joseph, because he was, he was of the house of David, and his distant ancestor a thousand years before was uh, King David. And since he was from Bethlehem, that's why they had to end up in Bethlehem. Okay. So that's why. Okay. So why, why make that big trip while she's, the Virgin Mary was heavy with child, you know? But they had to, because that was the law, okay, um, to, to register for the census. Anyway, so um, the, um, before I get into the hard one, home, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. In your paper, the, the Tropadion, the Contakion, the Tropadion and the Contakion have, in the chant poetic form, uh, the theme that we're observing today. So, in tone, so to, tone, the first one is Tropod in tone four, that's of the resurrection. Because every Sunday we're celebrating the resurrection. So, if you notice when we celebrate the liturgy, we, you hear over and over about the resurrection. O, you know, O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us, it seemed to you. Okay. Um, um, and it's, uh, that's our big, our um, ongoing emphasis on Sundays. But this Sunday, the Sunday of the Forefathers, we're looking at those who, who preceded Christ coming into the world. Um, of course, we know Christ did not have a human father. But the genealogy that is observed concerning Christ uh, has to do with St. Joseph, okay, because he, he's his legal father, okay. Um, and uh, so the your genealogy comes from the father, okay? So you inherit that. Okay? So even though Saint Joseph was not the father of our Lord, um, his genealogy is passed to Christ. Okay? There is a tradition that the mother of God did have a Davidic background, so so that she might have been related uh, in some way to also to that same tribe. You know, all the Jews, all the Hebrews, the Israelites were divided into twelve tribes. Never belong to one of those tribes, okay? And sometimes there's a mixture of tribes, like so they think with the mother of God was the, the tribe of Levi and of Judah, okay? And that's the the Levitical tribe was the priestly class. All all Jewish priests, the Kohen, they were taken from that tribe of Levi or Levi, okay? And then uh, the royal clan was uh, Judah. Okay. So it's sort of King David, Solomon, that's the, the royal clan. Anyways, um, so that's that, what that icon is about. I'm going to be giving out today this icon at the end of the liturgy. And this is the mother god of the sign. Okay. The sign Emmanuel. Um, but there's a certain one, it's called Kursk, the Russian version of that icon. But it shows the Mother of God, and at the center, there's this circular shape, and you see Christ there in the middle. But that symbolizes is Christ in the womb, okay? But, so he's not born yet. So, this, so the, this, the sign is the sign for you, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. A virgin, this is the sign that will be given to you. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. And so that circle kind of, it's like Christ is, the interior, Christ in her womb is projected outwardly. That's what this icon shows me, okay? Um, so, use that. Now, this gospel today um, has to do with um, ultimately, with this theme of preparing the way for the coming of the Messiah. And it says that people were called, but always people made excuses 
and didn't arrive at the banquet. The first call was Israel. Okay? And as a whole, the people of Israel did not accept Christ, did not accept the Messiah, did not come to the banquet, and did not participate in the banquet of the kingdom. Okay? Um, so it says, get other people then. Okay, they're not friends or relatives, but bring others in. There's another parable that says it's a wedding banquet. Okay? And, um, and the father thought, those are the Gentiles. These were the non-Jews whom God called to come to the banquet of the kingdom. And, um, and that's what most of us are. Most of us, I don't think any, I don't, maybe some of that has a Jewish background, okay? Uh, otherwise, we're not the descendants of Abraham according to our DNA, but we are the Gentiles, the, the peoples of the world besides the Jews. Because in, in the, the Old Testament, you're either a Jew or an Israelite a Hebrew, or you're just the other people, <laughs> the, the Gentiles, okay? The Goyim. <clears throat> but as we see, and when he says Christ's life unfolds, that many that all the, the apostles were, were Jews. The mother of God was Jew. Um, and a lot of the first converts to the beginners of Christianity were Jews. But on the, the whole, they did not accept Christ. Okay? Um, and um, so God also intended though ultimately that everyone would be called. He didn't just want to just help save one tribe of people. Okay. But that's how the story of salvation unfolded. He starts with particulars. He picks Abraham, the Abraham's family, and his clan, his the then the twelve tribes, twelve clans that flow from Abraham, is the twelve tribes of Israel. And then then the whole world is called. So there's twelve tribes of Israel. And then when Jesus, before he ascends into heaven, he has his twelve apostles. And he says, you go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So the twelve, representing the twelve tribes of Israel, go forth into the world to call a new Israel, a new people, the new Zion, which is the church. <coughs> Church is the new Israel. So Jesus taught, it's not enough to be a relative of Abraham according to your DNA. Okay. But you have to have the faith of Abraham. You have to heed the call of God. Abraham in his old age was called to basically leave what is now Iraq to go down to Israel. What, what promised land. Okay. Um, and he heeded God's call, and he left. Okay. So the people who respond to the Lord and act according to God's will, those are the true people of God. But Jesus said during his time, some people were saying, well, we're the children of Abraham, and we're kind of secure. And Jesus said, no, God could get any rock and make that into a child of Abraham. Okay. So, but <coughs> Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Abraham looked forward to the coming of the Christ. And uh, so even though Abraham never knew Christ, because he was thousand and something years before, 2004, Christ, um, uh, he, interiorly he longed for the one the Lord would send. But then the Lord came. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. He was with his own, but his own received him not. Okay. And so in one sense that's Israel, ancient Israel, that did not embrace Christ as a, as a whole. But then it's also us, because we are the new Israel. But then like the old Israel, often we're not, we don't respond to God. So we are called to the banquet. In fact, in a very concrete way, that's what's happening today. This is the divine banquet of the Holy and Divine Eucharist, where God calls us into communion with Him, 
together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, but do we heed that call? Okay. We could be here, we could come and receive communion, but are we interiorly giving ourselves over to the Lord, committing our, our way of life, the way we live, is that being committed to Him? Our family life, what we do at school, what we do at work, what we, how we deal with other people, the, our decisions in life, are these things in accord with God's will? Are we heeding His call? Or are we making excuses? Well, maybe later on, you know, I'll, I'll get religious when I turn 80 or something like that, you know, but right now I, I have a lot of stuff to do, okay? Uh, but we might not ever get to that point. There's many people who pass away uh, very young. You know, we had the, the icon of St. Nazarios. We had a young man who was one of the parishes who's named Nassad. And uh, he's 23 years old, by the accident, 23. Just finished college, and then every, you know, it just ends right there. Okay, so we have to be ready for that. So we can't say, well, we'll wait till later on. Okay. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. So we should go to confession when we need to, to prepare the way of the Lord in our life. Otherwise, how do we really celebrate the nativity of the Lord his coming into the world if we really don't allow him into us. Okay. There has to be a way of life is it, to invite the Lord to us, into our lives. So this is the banquet. God has called us to come to the banquet to receive his divine body and his life-giving blood. And so do we respond to that? So today, let's respond. Yes, Lord, I need you. Lord, you are the Savior. I receive you into me. And by receiving you, I commit myself to live according to your commandments, according to the gospel, to live according to uh, all that you have taught us. Because remember, Jesus says, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. Behold, I am with you all days, even to the end of the world. And to the Lord be praise and glory, now and to the age of ages. Amen. Amen. May God save the whole soul, and with our whole mind let us sing. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Father, we pray here to have mercy. Oh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Spirit, now and ever, and forever.
most reverend metropolitan William, our God of Bishop Kurt, the Venerable Presbyter, the Diaconate Christ, the Minor Orders, the Monastic Order, our civil authorities, all the armed forces, and all in the service of our country, the noble, ever memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen.
to worship you in every place of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, <coughs> ever the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. He brought us out from non-existence to being, and again raised us up when we have fallen, and left nothing undone until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, you only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, <coughs> for all that we know and do not know, for the manifest and hidden benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for the liturgy which are pleased to accept from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six wings, many eyes soaring aloft on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying, the triumphal hymn.
remission of sins, the community of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, how to resume in our judgment of condemnation. Lord, we offer you this spiritual sacrifice for those who parted in the faith. The forefathers, the fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every just spirit, righteous perfection and faith. <coughs> Especially the most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady that they have told us. And ever virgin. It is truly proper to glorify you, O Theotokos, the ever blessed and immaculate and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious and the Table, 
May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy our master, that we may with confidence without condemnation. Dear Holy Father, God of heaven, and the sin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive
of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us. And bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the undivided Trinity. For the Trinity has saved us. This is all to the Lord of Heavens of God. Blessed is our God, always now and ever and forever. to fight the good fight, to finish the grace of right belief, and to keep the faith they confessed. Grant us a part and an inheritance in imitating them, that we may become <coughs> worthy to share in the good things you have in store for, the, for them. Have mercy on us and be our helper through the prayers and procession of the, of the pure and holy Mother of God, of the holy and glorious three children, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, of the holy and blessed uh, prophet Daniel, and of all your saints, after purifying us, make us worthy by the working of your life-creating spirit to venerate the feast of the Nativity of Christ our God in the flesh. For to you is all glory and honor and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever. And forever. Amen. Blessed be thy name.
both now and ever, and forever. Amen. And sorry that we started a little bit late today. Um, we had a funeral. I had a funeral yesterday in Sacramento, and I didn't bring everything back from the car. And oh no, so, and it's still coming. Today. I'm fine. I hope we don't leave it over there. But uh, so um, okay. Also, so next week is the final Sunday before the you know, two. So actually, next week is Christmas Eve. Okay, uh, but it's, it's the next Sunday of the Holy Fathers, and uh, so uh, we want to give our give an opportunity for confession. So we'll confession before the liturgy next week and after the Divine Liturgy next Sunday. Okay. Also, this uh, this Friday is uh, we do the, the Royal Hours of the Nativity, which is usually done on Christmas Eve in the morning, and that usually goes with strict fast. But since we don't ever strict fast on Sundays. Or Saturdays is moved to the Friday. Okay, so um, you're welcome to come to the, the royal hours. These are the little they call the little hours, uh, but they're a little bit longer because uh, of the feast that's been celebrated. So they call the royal hours because these were uh, devotional or uh, services that the emperor used to attend himself. So uh, so they the royal hours. So um, so uh, if you need the schedule for the for this coming week up to Theophany. Uh, we saw the more bulletins there, it's the same ones as last week, but in there is listed the, the times. Also, if any of you need anointing the sick, maybe next week, just let me know at that time. Okay. Um, any questions that this coming week? Okay, so. Glory to Christ our God, our holy glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Give the blessing. May Christ our true God, He who is risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us through the prayers of His most beloved, the ever virgin Theotokos. And uh, through the prayers of the Holy, our Holy Father, John Christian Archbishop of Constantinople, uh, the Holy Prophet Daniel, and the Holy Three Children, Asura, Ananiah, and Mishael. And uh, through the prayers of our Holy Father among the saints, Bass, the Great Archbishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia, the Holy Temple, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good. And he loves mankind. Amen. There's one last thing. There are some envelopes over there in case you want to. Uh, uh, we'll be decorating later on this afternoon of the church. Uh, some people have donated some of the, the Christmas flowers. But if you want to donate uh, something for the, the wreaths that we're putting up and everything, and you want them in honor of someone right, as a memorial, then there's envelopes there and you can fill that out. Okay? And you don't have to give it this week, just the next week. Uh, actually, it'd probably be good to give us as soon as possible so we could put the names down. But um, um, if not, uh, just put the names down and then you could do it <coughs> online also. Like, don't do that. Okay. Um, that's it. Christ is at least. We need your compassion. Christ. We take refuge. Oh.